Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. These are our mini episodes designed to satiate your need for Tomorrow Daily until our new set is built. Oh, but enough of that. Let's hit the headlines. <laughs> Researchers working for Boeing have developed a material that is 100 times lighter than styrofoam, and they're finally showing off that process in a new video. Oh, and by the way, that material, it's actually made of metal. HRL Laboratories developed this material. It's a micro lattice that they compared to your bone structure. So rigid on the outside, but generally hollow on the inside. Meaning it would be lightweight, but also really hard to crush. The material itself is 99.99% air, and the wall thickness of the hollow tubes that make up the micro lattice are a thousand times thinner than a human hair, which is pretty futuristic stuff. Possible applications for this metal micro lattice include Boeing's own airplanes or maybe even cars because HRL Laboratories works with General Motors. Uh, now, going from earthbound travel to up in space, robots may someday help astronauts aboard the ISS. Well, this robot is the Besman Isla. It's a collaboration between the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence and the University of Bremen. Isla has articulated fingers on both arms, cameras in its head, a short-range laser scanner in its chest, and a bunch of other various features and connection abilities. Now, the idea here is to train the robot to complete menial tasks on board the ISS, freeing up astronauts to complete tasks that either require human intuition or maybe a task that requires two human operators. They're still working really hard on Isla, and they're not quite ready yet to tackle things like microgravity and how Isla would get around, but we may see a demonstration via a simulation of the International Space Station sometime in the near future. I'm going from robots helping astronauts in outer space to people who maybe saw a bug's life way too many times and said, we should drink water like ants. I have to, of course, tell you about Uho. This is Uho, an edible water bottle that looks and handles like a palm-sized water balloon. It was created by London-based startup Skipping Rocks Lab, who says this delivery method for water is easy and cheap to make, hygienic, and most importantly, biodegradable. Well, Skipping Rocks reminds us that single-use water bottles are wildly unsustainable and terrible for the environment, but Uho's casing is made of brown algae and calcium chloride. So once you're done sucking all the water out of that beautiful little orb, you can throw it out with the knowledge that you're helping save the environment, or you can eat. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. I'm not eating that. Let's talk about Beckett or Hackett. <laughs> Today's Back at Her Hack It, it's the perfect product for anybody who wants to grow a micro rainforest in their home. <laughs> this is called the Biopod. This is pretty cool. We're super intrigued by the Biopod. This is a self-titled world's first smart microhabitat. Uh, the Biopod uses an app to actually regulate light, temperature, humidity, ventilation, and even rainfall inside the unit. Uh, there are a bunch of different presets in the app that you can choose from once you get your Biopod and you're ready to start up, ranging from growing some tomatoes all the way to cultivating a little tiny rainforest complete with tree frogs. The app walks you through the setup, planting of your plants, and then lets you walk away from it as it regulates the small environment to its needs. There are three models of Biopod. There's the one, which is the most basic model. There's the Terra, which is meant to be sort of a terrain. And then, of course, the Aqua, so you can actually make it a fish tank if you want, if you buy that higher-end one. Uh, the Biopod 1 starts at $205 US dollars without plants, so you got to populate yourself with plants. If you want the Biopod to come with a plant starter pack, there are backer levels for that as well. Uh, they have 22 days left, and they've already surpassed their goal of 30,000 Canadian dollars by quite a bit. So if you want to back it, the Biopod looks like it's definitely going to happen. All right, guys, we've talked about crowdfunding. We've talked about the headlines. Let's take a look at your beautiful photos. Today's phone talker for the day is Reese. He took this with his Galaxy S6 Edge, and he writes to us, and he says... Hey, Ashley, love the show. I love the passion you bring to the stories. Really gets people excited about tech. Love it. These are a couple of photos taken on my S6 Edge of Melbourne, Australia. This is the beautiful Crown Casino flames along South Bank, as well as the view of the Eureka Tower during sunrise from my home. Of course, you have permission to use these photos if I'm lucky enough to make it on the show. Well, it's your lucky day. And if they have a lottery in Australia, you should buy a ticket. You'll probably only win like $2, but 
you know, maybe if, you, if you're lucky enough to make it on Tomorrow Daily, you can win threes of dollars from the lottery. If you guys want to submit your photography, you can, of course, send it over to tomorrow at CNET.com. Send us your picture, give us permission to use it, and tell us a little story about it, too. Also, you can find us online. We're tomorrowdaily.com if you want to share the show with your friends. We're all over social media. And, of course, if you want to find me or Producer Logan personally on Twitter, you can find me at Ashley Esqueda and Producer Logan at Logan Moy. Well, that's it for the show, guys. We'll be back tomorrow with a bunch of science fact, meeting science fiction. But until then, be good humans. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, my God.